Ellison, and uh, this is a story about um, my best aunt ever, and she happened to have been my um, grandmother's youngest sister. She was also known in her neighborhood in West Philadelphia as the news, and so <laughs> she, uh, everybody, she was in everybody's business, and um, I, during the late 90s, before the heyday of the online dating process, um, J-Date was around, and of course my Aunt Anne knew about it, and, um, and so I was visiting, and she said, why don't you pick up your box, which was my laptop computer, and, <laughs> and she said, come on, let's, you know, get you online, and I was like, eh, I don't know about that, and on my thing and whatever, and she's like, "Do it." And you know, I didn't mess with Anne Anne, and so I was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna do this, then you're gonna do it with me." So I made her go through the whole process with me, and she learned all about J date, and she got to pick some boys for me, and nobody was really worth it. That hasn't changed, and, um, and I constantly get told that too. Not just me. And, um, and so let's just fast forward just a little further into the future, but not too far. And I come back to Philadelphia, and I'm on a blind date. And I am in Maniunk, I think, uh, sitting outside, having the most excruciating and painful blind date of my life. Um, and this guy was going on and on and on and on, and I really didn't even know what to do with myself. But before he went on, we were looking at the menu, and I picked this, um, this particular restaurant because he had said that he was very vegetarian, and I just considered that, you know, he was no longer vegan. And I said, okay, that's fine. So you're no longer militant about your vegetarianism, and I'm okay with that. And so he looked at my menu, and he pointed at my menu, and he said, all right, well, I've looked at this, and you can order this, this, or this, but I won't pay for any meat. Now, I don't need to tell you, but I will tell you that at the age of six, I was marching on Washington for women's rights. And nobody tells me what to eat. <laughs> So I'm sitting there and this guy goes on and on and on and I'm working on listening to my better angels that maybe this guy is the angel that teaches me how to listen with patience to somebody who's completely oblivious. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and like I'm getting looks from the people next to me and they're like giving me these we're so sorry looks. <laughs> I'm really not sure what to do with myself. I sprint to the bathroom. I try and cajole the waitress to bring the um, to bring the check, and she's like on it. And, <laughs> and she, I come back to the table, and the check's not there. And she looks at me, and she's like, "I'm so sorry." And she, he was like, "Oh, we're gonna order dessert." And I was like, "Oh God, dessert too." And. Um, and so we're sitting there, I'm trying to make my way through it, and pass by my cousin. She comes by, and she's, she and her husband, whatever, younger than me, and, um, and she tells me that they're all meeting, and her sister is coming with her husband, and then the next one comes with her husband, and they're all meeting, and I'm still sitting here with this ass, and he won't stop talking, and he finally gives me a so tell me about yourself kind of thing. I'm like, we're done here. And then all of a sudden I hear, I had to come all the way from Florida to see you? And it was my Aunt Anne, and she was there to tell me, you know, to save me, basically. I jumped up from the table, and I, um, I jumped up from the table, gave her a big hug. He looked at me like I was a Martian because he couldn't believe I had any kind of emotions because I was just about dead. And, uh, I was like, okay, so we're
we're done here. Good luck to you. You seem like like a perfectly nice person. Goodbye. <laughs>